uh, once again with another video in this video we are going to learn how to solve various sum under the chapter capital budgeting again a very important topic for all the ty bml sm6 student for the subject strategic financial management in this video we are going to cover up six different types of sums that can come under capital budgeting chapter so let us start with the very first sum okay now let us see how to solve the very type uh, the very first type of sum which is based on risk adjusted cut out trade okay now the question given is, is determine the risk adjusted net present value of the following projects they are given you three projects project p q and r the net cash outlay is given as 1 lakh 1 lakh 20 2 lakh 10 project life is given as 5 years annual inflows are 30 42 and 70000 and they are giving you coefficient of variation uh, 0.4 0.8 and 1.2 and after that it is given that the company selects the risk adjusted rate of discount on the basis of the following coefficient of variation uh, multiple coefficients of variations are given with the different rates and the pv factor of 1 to 5 years at risk adjusted rate of discount okay So let us see now how to solve such kind of sum. Okay, this is the very first type of sum based uh, under the topic capital budgeting. Okay, sure. So in order to start solving the sum, okay, we will first give the heading as calculation of risk adjusted cash. Low. Okay. So I'll underline that part. Uh, okay. Now, in order to solve this, okay, we we'll, we'll be creating a table. Okay, we'll be creating a table uh, having different columns. So first, we'll make a table, and then we'll see how to solve this. So again, very simple sum. Okay, we'll make a table. Now the table will have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they'll have approximately six columns. So we'll have your projects, the annual cash inflow, the coefficient of variation, risk-adjusted rate of discount, PV of five years, and last column is PV. Okay, yeah. these are the columns uh, that are required in order to solve the sum okay now let us see how we start about with this sum okay i get the, i got the calculator okay the very first column is called the projects here we will have the projects next will be annual cash inflow then we will have coefficient of variation we'll have risk adjusted rate of discount we will have pv factor and lastly we'll have present value or also known as cash uh, you know you can call it as cash inflow okay or discounted cash inflow so now let us see how we solve this particular sum okay now very first thing under projects now if you look into the question there are three projects project p q and r so under projects we'll note down you know we'll note down project p q and r the annual cash inflows are given as 30000 42000 and 70000 okay three those values are already given the question now coefficient of variation now if you look in the uh, the last line of the first table it's given as 0.2 0.8 and 1.2 so we will to we will take those values as it is so we will take the values as 0.4 0.8 and 1.2 risk adjusted rate of returns are also given to us as 
you know is given to us in the question now if you look carefully okay come to the table okay the table that we have created see there's a second table so now look search for coefficient of variation so coefficient of variation 0.4 ke liye the risk adjusted rate of return is given as 12% so i'll note down this as 12% and the pv factor along with that given as 3.605 Next is 0.8. 0.8 के लिए इट इज गिवन एस 14 परसेंट एंड 14 परसेंट का पीवी फैक्टर इस 3.433 एंड लास्टली फॉर 1.2 इट इज गिवन एस 16 परसेंट एंड द पीवी फैक्टर फॉर 16 परसेंट इस 3.274 ओके वंस वी गेट दैट नाउ वील मल्टीप्लाई वील मल्टीप्लाई कैश इनफ्लो विद द पीवी फैक्टर्स टू गेट अ पीवी सो 30,000 Three point six zero five will give you one zero eight one five zero. Second, forty two thousand into three point four three three. That comes to one lakh forty four thousand one hundred and eighty six. Next is seventy thousand into three point two seven four, which gives you the value as two two nine one eight zero. Okay. This is the very first step. We need to get the cash inflow. Now we can get, you know, we can get the final answers. So we'll write down on second calculation of net present value NPV of the projects. So very simple. First, we'll find for project P. So project P के लिए the formula, the formula of NPV is basically present value minus the outlay, okay, or the outflow. Okay, the outflow or the investment value. So in the question, see if you look carefully in the question, very first thing is only given outlay of one lakh, one lakh twenty, and two lakh ten thousand. So for P, the inflow is one lakh eight thousand one hundred and fifty minus outflow. Outflow was rupees one lakh. U minus we get the value as rupees eight thousand one hundred and fifty. For project Q. Okay, we got one four four one eight six minus one lakh twenty thousand. So I get one four four one eight six minus one lakh twenty thousand. So we get the value as present value twenty four thousand one hundred and eighty six. And third, project R is equal to two lakh twenty nine thousand one hundred and eighty minus two lakh ten thousand. When you subtract them, okay. So two two nine one eight zero minus two lakh ten thousand, we will get the value as nineteen thousand one hundred and eighty. Okay, now from this we have to select which is the best alternative available. So since the NPV of the second project is the highest, so we write therefore, or conclusion we can write therefore we can write project Q should since since this is the highest, okay, should be selected. Since it has higher NPV, okay. This is how you will have to solve the you know the sum which is based on risk-adjusted cash flow. So whenever they give you risk-adjusted uh, in the question, okay, if they tell you to find uh, you know the NPV as per risk-adjusted uh, method, so they will always give you risk-adjusted cutout rate. And based on that, okay, we have to first find the PV, and with the help of PV, you can find the NPV. So this was the very first type of sum which can come under capital budgeting. Okay, now we'll jump to the second type of sum. Okay, now the second type of sum is based on risk index. Okay. If risk index is given in the question, then how we need to solve the sum? Okay, so let us go through the question once. It's given that Mohan Limited is considering investment in one of the two mutually exclusive project X and Y. The company's cost of capital is fifteen percent, and the risk-free interest rate is ten percent. The income tax of the company is thirty-four percent. Mohan Limited has gathered the following information of its cash flow and risk index rate for each product, uh, each project. 
we have project x we have project y initial investments is given cash inflow of the four years are given and risk index uh, is given to us okay so wherever risk index is given this is how we need to solve this okay so follow the steps very carefully okay number one we will first start okay we will first give the heading as we are going to find something called as see if you look carefully they haven't given us uh, you know the the risk return because they want us to find uh, the, they are giving you the risk index but they haven't given us the risk return okay so we need to find the adjusted risk here in order to find the NPV okay so now see how we solve this so we'll give the heading as number one we need to calculate the risk adjusted discount rate which is also known as capital R A D R. so radar we can use it as okay so we need to first find the risk adjusted discount rate in the previous uh, sum the, the risk returns are already given so we just had to use some formulas uh, you know we just had to use take those values and you know multiply and get the PB factor okay so now here it is not given so we'll have to find okay so there's a formula for risk adjusted discount rate so radar ka formula is RF that is risk free return plus Okay, risk free return plus R I that will be your risk index into K O that is your cost of capital minus risk free return. Okay, so this is the formula that we will be following and based on this we have to find the, the risk adjusted for project X and for project Y. So for project X, now in the question if you look carefully, they have already given you risk return is, yeah, it's given as 10%, the risk free interest rate is 10%, so I'm taking this as 10% plus. The risk index for company X, uh, project X is 1.80 into, the cost of capital given in the question is 15%, so I'll take it as 0.15. And the risk free again it's, uh, it's a 10 percent so I'll take it as 0 0.10 okay so now this is very simple you will first subtract multiply whatever answer you'll get you'll add it with 10 so here we should basically get you know the answer as so if I if I take it on Calci I'll get 0 0.15 minus 0 0.1 into 1.8 so that comes to 0 0.09 okay and uh, 0.09 in our normal case is basically a uh, 9 percent okay 0 0.09 is in 9 percent so 9 percent plus 10 will give you 19 percent same way for why the risk free is 10 plus the risk index given is 1 so 1.00 into okay 0 0.15 minus 0 0.10 okay again when you multiply uh, you know 0. 1 5 or oh, it's like 15 percent 15 minus 10 is 5 percent 5 into 1 is 5 so 10 plus 5 is 15 percent that's the very first step okay this is the very first step that you need to find okay now once we have found the risk adjusted discount rate now we can you know we can go ahead and calculating the risk adjusted NPV okay so I'll write this now this is second heading now calculation of risk adjusted NPV first we will be finding for project X okay for project X now the columns that I will require is years cash inflow EV factor at 19% and present value Okay, so we will make those columns. Okay, I will require years. So we have four years ka data. We we'll require cash inflow. PV factor and lastly PV. 
So here I write years. Now in the question it is already given that the sum, you know, the data is for four years. So we write here years may one, two, three, and four. We write cash inflow. In the question, uh, it is given in the question clearly that the cash inflow for each year is five lakhs. So I will take this as five lakhs. Every year it's five lakhs. Okay. Now PV factor at the rate of 19 percent. Now remember, in order to calculate the PV factor, it will be always one divided by 119 percent. Okay. Whatever amount you get, that will be considered as the very first value, and then you have to press into equal to equal to equal to, and you'll get the subsequent values. So PV factor 19 percent is 0 0.8403. Next will give you 0 0.7062, next 0 0.5934 and lastly 0 0.4987. You will multiply your cash inflow with your PV factor and you will get your present value. So I'll get this as 4 lakh, 5 lakh into 0 0.8403. So that will give you 4 lakh 20,150. Next, 5 lakh into 0 0.7062. That will give you 3 lakh 53,100. Next, 5 lakh into 0 0.5934 will give you 2 lakh 96,700. And next, 5 lakh into 0 0.4987 will give you 2 lakh 49,350. We will add up the total PV. 420150 plus 35300 plus 296700 plus 249350. Our total will be 139300. Finally, your NPV is equal to your total PV 139300 minus your initial investment. Now, initial investment given in the question is 120,000. So if I minus one like twenty thousand, we will get our answer as thirteen like nineteen three hundred minus one like twenty thousand. So we'll get it at eleven like ninety nine thousand three hundred as my first NPV. Now similarly, we'll have to find for project Y. So B may we are writing now. This is project Y. Similar columns. Okay, we'll have to create similar columns. So I'll have years. I'll have cash inflow. I will have PV factor, but now at 15%. Okay. Okay, exactly in this on the same line. Okay, on the same way how we did the first part, exactly in this on the same line we'll have to do for the second part also. So we have years. Now years may again one, two, three, and four. Cash inflow. Now cash inflow they are given in the question. And now this is a mix. They are not all five lakhs. So we have five lakh for the first year. 4 lakh for the second, 3 lakh, sorry, 5 lakh for the third, and 3 lakh for the fourth year. We have PV at the rate of 15%. So again, it will be 1 divided by 115% into equal to equal to, and you will get those values. The first value should be 0 0.8696. Next will be 0 0.7561. Third will be 0 0.6575. And last will be 0 0.5718. Once we get that, we will have to find the PV. PV is nothing but the multiplication of cash inflow and PV factor. So it will be 5 lakh into 0 0.86. 
nine six, so that will be four lakh thirty four thousand eight hundred. Next is four lakhs into point seven five six one, that will be three zero two four four zero. Next is five lakh into point six five seven five, which will give you three lakh twenty eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. And last three lakh into point five seven one eight, which will give you one seven one five four zero. When you add up, when you add up, four thirty four eight hundred plus three zero two four four zero plus three two eight seven five zero plus one seven one five four zero. When you add up, you get twelve lakh thirty seven thousand five hundred and thirty. Once we get that, we get the into the final formula. NPV is equal to total PV, twelve lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred and thirty minus initial investment. Our initial investment is thirty uh, is ten lakhs. So less ten lakh. When you subtract, we'll get two lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred and thirty as our NPV. Okay. Now among this, if you have to compare by a huge difference, okay, uh, the first project is on the higher side. So we'll write for if I want to write a final conclusion, I can say, therefore, project X should be selected. Okay, because it has a higher NPV. Now this is how you all had to solve the sum. Whenever they give you risk index in the question, okay. I hope everyone have understood. This is the second method, okay, or the second type of sum which can come in this particular chapter. Okay. Now let us jump to the third type. Okay. Now the third type is called as the certainty equivalent approach. Okay, now this particular term will be mentioned in the question. Okay, so let us see first what is the question all about and how to solve this. Okay, uh, Murba Tours and Travel Limited employs certainty equivalent approach in the evaluation of risky investment. The finance department of the company has developed the following information regarding a new project. Uh, they are giving you number of years, so there are five years. Uh, the negative amount is nothing but your investment of two lakhs, and then they are giving you your expected cash flow after tax. And they are giving you certainty equivalent quotient. The firm's cost of equity capital is eighteen percent. Should the project be accepted or not? Okay. Again, basically we need to find the NPV, but again with a different approach. So let us see how to solve uh, such sum when they are giving you equivalent or certainty equivalent quotient. Okay, very simple. So first we'll make the table, we'll make the columns, and we'll see how to go about after that. Okay. So from the columns point of view, uh, it, the table will be a little longer table because a lot of data will be required here. Some few extra columns will be required. So I will have here number one years. Okay, I'll have cash inflows. I will have certainty equivalent quotient. I will have. Uh, another column for cash inflow. I will have PV factor, and lastly, I will have PV. Okay. Now see how we do. First, we note down the years. Now in the question, if you look carefully, they have given you five years car details. Okay, there are five years, and then the cash flow is given of one sixty, one forty, one thirty, one twenty, and eighty. So we will note down under years one, two, three, four, and five. Then I need cash inflow. The cash inflow is one lakh sixty thousand, one lakh forty thousand. One lakh thirty thousand, one lakh twenty thousand, and eighty thousand. Once I get that, after that we need to put the certainty equivalent where they are giving you zero point eight. That is also given in the question, okay? 
and 0.3 next step we need to again find the cash inflow that is nothing but you know cash inflow the original multiply by the certainty equivalent so you multiply them so if I, if I name this as step A and this is step B this is nothing but step A plus B okay so 1 lakh 16 to 0 0.8 will give you 1 lakh 28,000 uh, next will be 98,000 78,000 48,000 and last 80 into 3 is 24,000 after that I need PV factor at the rate of 18% in the question last line they are giving you cost of equity capital is 18% so I will take that as PV factor at the rate of 18% so again it will be very simple it will be you know we will have 1 divided by 118% so we get the first answer as 0 0.8474 then we'll press into equal to 7 uh, 0 0.7181 and we'll keep pressing equal to so that we get the other values okay so the very first value was 0 0.8474 the next 0 0.7181 next 0 0.6086 next 0 0.5157 and lastly 0 0.4371 last step pv we multi need to multiply the cash inflow, the new cash inflow in, into the PV factor and we will get the total PV. So that is 108467 70374 47,474 24,754 and lastly 10,490. Once you get that we will total and we will try to find the total PV. So when you add up the values of PV okay the total should come to 2,61,556 that's it now once you get to this step now it is very simple we need to find NPV so NPV is nothing but total PV minus investment so my total PV was 2,61,556 minus the investment in the investment the question may is given as 2 lakhs so when you subtract we get it as 61,556 rupees okay so that's my final answer so it's given in the question they had asked ki should the project be accepted since the, uh, the NPV is in positive we can say that therefore the project should be accepted okay so this is how you have to solve sum which was based on the you know the certainty equivalent quotient okay so this was the third type of sum that you can get under capital budgeting chapter okay i hope everyone have understood this okay so now we'll jump to the next type type number four okay the very next type of sum is based on sensitivity technique okay so now let us see how uh, to solve the sum when we have question based on sensitivity technique okay the question reads out are from the following project detail calculate the sensitivity of a project cost second annual cash flow third cost of capital and then they told you which variable is most sensitive they are giving you the project cost of 12,000 annual cash flow is 4,500 uh, life of the project is 4 years cost of capital is 14% the annuity factor of at 14% for 4 years is 2.9137 and at 18% for 4 years it is 2.667 okay so now let us see let us see how to solve such kind of sum okay follow the step this, this entire sum is step by uh, you know based on steps okay so the very first step will be number one you need to first find npv npv ka formula is pv of cash inflow minus PV of cash 
outflow okay so the present value of cash inflow okay how how will we find the present value of cash inflow first of all okay now if you look carefully if you look carefully in the question uh, they have given you uh, the annual cash flow is 4500 okay and it's for four year life of the project is four years and four years ka pv factor is given as 2.9137 so 4500 into 2.9137 okay that will give you your a uh, pv inflow okay so 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 how you will get that basically is 4500 into 2.9137 when you multiply you will get your cash flow uh, cash inflow or pv of cash inflow outflow is already given in the question as project cost that is 12000 so 4500 into 2.9137 Thirteen thousand one hundred and twelve. Okay, that should be your value of inflow minus twelve thousand. So our NPV is nothing but one thousand one hundred and twelve. That's the first step you need to find. Okay. Now second, after doing that, now we need to find the sensitivity. So we write sensitivity of cash. inflow the formula is npv upon pv of inflow into 100 so npv we already found 1112 upon pv of inflow was 13112 into 100 when you will you know divide and multiply we should get the answer as 8.48% now what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of this okay For sensitivity of inflow means this is the benchmark. If your cash inflow reduces by this percentage, your NPV will be will become zero. So I'll write here: if your cash inflow reduces by eight point four eight percent, comma, your NPV would B zero. Okay. Step three, we need to find the sensitivity of cash outflow. Formula will be now NPV upon PV of outflow into hundred. Okay, so your NPV was again hundred and one 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 two upon outflow was twelve thousand into hundred. When you solve, you will get the answer as nine point two six percent. Okay, outflow me the rule will be if your cash outflow increases. Inflow is reduces, outflow is increases. Okay, increases by nine point two six percent. Then your NPV would will be zero. Okay, so your inflow is always if your inflow reduces by that percentage, it will become zero your NPV, and your outflow if it increases by that percent, it will become zero. Okay, last step. we need to find the sensitivity of cost of capital okay first we found npv second we found sensitivity of cash inflow sensitivity of cash outflow now we need to find sensitivity of cost of capital okay now in order to find that in order to find that we need to find we need we will be using a different formula for this okay so my formula will be cash inflow into the present value factor of annuity is equal to cash outflow okay the pvifa that is nothing but the pv factor so cash flow into pv factor will give you cash outflow that's the formula now in the sum cash inflow was 4500 We need to first find the PV factor, okay? 
cash outflow is 12,000. So when I will divide, when I take the 4,500 on the other side, it will be 12,000 divided by 4,500. So I will get my PV factor as, uh, you know, 2.6666 and it, it will keep going here, okay? So now look, look at the question carefully. In the question it is given that uh, the annuity factor at 14% is 2.9137 which we already use and at 18% for 4 years is 2.6667. So basically this value is nothing but 18% PV factor. Okay, it is nothing but 18% PV factor. So now last thing we need to, so once you get this very simple, the sensitivity of cost of capital the formula is new minus old upon old into 100 so the new pv factor is 18 the old one was 14 upon 14 into 100 when you solve this you will get the answer as 28.57 percent now this percentage resembles that if cost of capital increases by 28.57% the NPV will be 0 ok I will write it here will be 0 ok so this is how you all had to solve ok uh, the sum so now if I have to give a final conclusion as to which uh, you know the which cash flow whether cash inflow cash outflow or cost of capital which one is the most sensitive factor okay so i'll have to find which is the most sensitive factor in this case so the one which reduces okay so basically uh, see here this is 8.48 9.26 28 the lowest value the lowest percentage is the most sensitive because it is on the lowest side. So even a small change and the, you know the NPV can become zero in that. So in our case, the most sensitive value is cash inflow. So you can write the final answer as conclusion. Cash inflow is the most sensitive factor. Okay. So this is how you'll have to solve some uh, whenever you know they are giving you question to solve based on sensitivity. Okay, so if they give you any any sum based on sensitivity technique, this is how you need to solve the sum. You need to first find the NPV, then you find the sensitivity of inflow, then outflow and then cost of capital. Once you get that, the least value, the least percentage will be your the most sensitive factor in the problem sum. Okay, I hope everyone have understood this. With this, this particular type comes to an end. Okay, now we'll jump to the next type. Okay, now the next technique is called as the probability technique. Okay, this is a very simple uh, sum to solve. Okay, a simple technique. In the questions given that the following table presents the proposal cash flow for project MNN with the associate probability. So, once every, whenever you see this word probability is probability technique, which project has the highest preference for acceptance? Okay, so uh, they are giving you project M, project N, they are giving you the cash flow. They are giving you the probabilities and there are five uh, possibilities which they are given us, okay? So now let us see how to solve that sum. So what I'll do is we'll first solve project M. So we'll have project M. Okay, so we'll first make those columns. I need four columns because uh, we'll have possibilities, cash info, probability and I need one more last column called expected profit. And the same will be required for even for project N also, okay. So what I'll do is we'll first make those columns and we'll keep. So I need for a possibility, I need cash inflows, I need probability and I need the last column. Okay, similarly I'll need for even for project N. So we will write project N. Again, I'll make those columns and I'll keep it ready.
Again, I'll make those columns. Okay, so now the very first, first we are only looking at project M. So I'll have possibilities. I have cash inflow. I have probability. And I need one more column called as expected profit. Okay, now possibilities may we have one, two, three, four, and five possibilities which are given us. Cash inflow may they are giving you the values as seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand, and eleven thousand. The probability is also given to us, so it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and lastly 0 0.2. 2, 0 or 2 is it means the same, okay? Now we need to find the expected profit as nothing but cash inflow multiplied by with the probability. So 7000 multiplied by 0 0.1 is 700. Next, 1600. Next, 2700 next 2000 and last 2200 when you total my expected profit will come to 9200 same way now we'll have to do for project n so again i'll have possibilities i have cash inflow i have probability Then I have expected profit 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, now the cash inflow given is 12,000, 8,000, 6,000, 4,000 and 2,000. Okay, probability given is 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Again 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. We multiply, we'll get the value as 1200, 800, 600, uh, 800 and lastly 1000. We total it up, uh, it will come to 4400. Now based on probability technique, uh, the expected profit of project M is the highest. So we can write that therefore, project M should be accepted because it gives you a higher expected profit okay so this is how you have to solve the sum under probability technique okay i hope everyone have understood till now all the different types of sum that we have done okay now we we'll jump to a very last type of sum okay a very last type of sum which is basically based on standard deviation okay so one very last type of sum let us see how to solve that particular sum okay the very last type of sum which usually comes under uh, capital budgeting is sum based on standard deviation and coefficient of variation okay now let us see how to solve such sum in the question is given that based on the data given below a certain which of the two projects would be more risky based on the criteria of variation they give you project x having cash flow and probability and project y having cash flow and probability always remember whenever the word risky comes into the question it is based on standard deviation and coefficient of variation okay so they're telling you based on the criteria of variation we have to say which one is the most riskier okay so now let us see how to solve such sum so i'll write here we are finding calculation of coefficient of variation okay now let us see what kind of a table will be required here
Okay. Now, the very first thing what I'll require here is uh, basically your cash inflow, and we'll term that as X. Then I'll need the probability. I'll need one more column after that, one more column after that, and another two more columns. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what is the, all the columns all about. Okay, first I'll just make a brief of it, and now we'll see, you know, what what we need to put in those headings. Okay. Okay. The very first column will be based on your cash inflow. We will name it as X. Okay. Now this is what we're making for project A. Okay. Now this is first project A related to project A. Sorry, this is project X and Y. So we'll name this as project x okay now in cash inflow they have given you 3000 3500 4000 4500 and 5000 probability so we'll name name that as p is given as 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 the total will always be 1. The next, now for me it's very important, we need to find the expected return that is nothing but cash inflow multiplied by the probability. So 3000 into 0 0.1 that's 300. Next 700. Uh, next 1600. Next 900. Next 500. And we need to total it up. That is known as X bar. That is the expected return basically we'll keep it as and we'll, the total comes to 4000. Okay, after getting this total, this is very important. Okay, after getting the total, our next column will be your X value, that is the cash inflow, minus X bar, that is the expected return. So, 3000 minus 4000 is negative 1000. 3500 minus 4000 is negative 500. 4000 minus 4000 is 0. 4.5 minus 4 is 500 positive. 5000 minus 4000 is positive 1000. Okay, next, x minus x bar, the whole square. We need to square it up. So, 1000 into 1000. So, we'll have 10 lakhs. 500 into 500. Okay, so we have 10 lakhs. We have 2 lakh 50,000. 0 into 0 is 0. Again, 2 lakh 50,000. And 10 lakhs. Once you get that, my final step, probability multiplied by x minus x bar the whole square. So 10 lakhs into 0 0.1, 2 and a half lakh into 0 0.2 and so on. So the first value will be 1 lakh. Next will be 50,000. Next is 0, then is again 50,000. And lastly is 1 lakh. The total comes to 3 lakhs. This, this total is nothing but variation, okay? Or, or we can also call it variance. Once you come to that, okay, now we need to find the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the root of variance. Okay, so in our case, it is root of 3 lakhs. So, 3 lakh uh, root, if you find, we get it as 500 and... 47 approximately so if you want to round it up we'll round it up to 548 lastly we need to find the coefficient of variance or variation so that will be standard deviation upon x bar so 548 divided by 4000 okay so we should get 0 0.137 approximately okay so this was for project X we have found. Now similarly we will find for project Y. So again a similar table we will create. Okay, similar columns. Okay. 
okay same same way we'll have to solve now this is for project y okay we are doing this for project y so i'll have cash inflow again that will be x values are given in the question as 2000 3000 4000 5000 and 6000 probability given in the question is 0 0.1 0 0.25 0 0.30, 0 0.25, and 0 0.1. Total comes to always 1. Now we need to find, uh, you know, basically the expected return that will be x into p. So 2000 into 0 0.1 is 200. Next is 750. Next is 1200. Next 1250. Next is 600. The total of that comes to 4,000. Next, x minus x bar. 2,000 minus 4,000 is negative 2,000. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 0, 1 and 2. Next, x minus x bar, the whole square. So that will become 40 lakhs. Uh, 10 lakhs. 0, 10 lakhs and 40 lakhs next is p into x minus x bar the whole square okay this is the square okay so 40 lakhs into 0 0.1 is 4 lakhs next is 2 lakh 50 thousand 0 2 lakh 50 thousand and 4 lakhs when you add up the total will come to 13 lakhs that is nothing but a variation once i get that we need to find the standard deviation so standard deviation is the root of variance or variation so the root of 13 lakhs we get the root of 13 lakhs as 100 and uh, 1140 okay once we get that we can find the last part that is the coefficient I'll just okay so coefficient of variation is standard deviation upon x bar so 1140 upon 4000 which comes to 0 0.285 okay so now based on this we need to give a final answer as to you know which one is more riskier now the first one was 0 0.137 the second one is 0 0.285 so 285 is definitely more bigger so you know if you have to conclude i can say that the coefficient of variation is greater in case of project you know y therefore y is much riskier than project x so i can if i am to say which is more riskier i can say uh, y is riskier then x okay so this is how you all had to solve the sum based on standard deviation and coefficient of variation so with this okay we have basically covered up all the different types of sum under capital budgeting okay i hope everyone have understood all the various types of sum which can come under this particular chapter with that we'll be you know uh, winding up this video I hope everyone have understood this. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.